Welcome to your take home podcast on the American Revolution. Today you're going to be going through an entire lesson cycle. This means that we're going to be going through a do now, a target, marginalia notes and videos, and then finally ending with an exit ticket. Let's go ahead and get started with the do now. For our directions, it says, using your knowledge and the notes unit 2.2 from last class on the Magna Carta and the Glorious Revolution, complete the do now flow chart by matching the facts and definitions below to the correct event boxes. If you take a look on your daily slip, you have the following definitions and facts listed. You have A through J. Your job is going to be to read through these facts and definitions in order to correctly place them in the appropriate box. This flowchart here goes over all of the events that we learned through the Unit 2.2 notes. And so your job is going to be to go ahead and read each of these 10 events in order to correctly place the letter that belongs to them for the factor definition. Go ahead and pause your podcast video in order to work through this do now. All right, so now that you've gone ahead and worked through the do now, let's go ahead and check our answers. If you got answers incorrect, please make sure to correct the answers, but also to go back through the unit 2.2 notes in order to understand why the answer was incorrect. If you're unable to understand why an answer was incorrect, please make sure that you reach out to your teacher, either in person, via email, or on Google Classroom. It's going to be critical that you understand this flowchart and all of the definitions and facts that go with this flowchart. Now that we're done with the do now, let's go ahead and jump into the next portion of our podcast lesson. Before we go over the actual target agenda, let's break down our objective together. Your objective is located on the first slide of your notes packet. Let's read the objective. Given a take-home podcast lesson with marginalia notes and four video clips with questions, students will be able to recall what the American Revolution was and describe its causes by completing a causes chart that uses at least three predetermined vocabulary terms. Please be sure to break down the objective as I break it down using the circle, boxing, and underlining method. The thinking skill for today is going to be recall, so you should have recall circled. The content or subject that we're learning is what the American Revolution was and describing its causes. Please make sure that you've boxed this content. Finally, you're going to show that you've mastered the objective for today by completing a causes chart that uses at least three predetermined vocabulary terms. Please make sure that you've underlined how you will prove your mastery today. Now that we've broken down the objective with our shapes method, let's take a look at the agenda for today. We've already completed our do now. We're currently on the target slide. In just a moment, we're going to jump into our podcast where we will be completing some marginalia notes and watching video clips. When we're done, we'll go ahead and end with an exit ticket. In terms of homework due next class, next class you need to turn in the daily slip for this podcast lesson. If you are in periods 1 and 2, I will see you on Tuesday, September 19th, and this is the day that your daily slip for this podcast is due. If you're in periods 5 or 6, I will see you Wednesday the 20th, and that is the day that your daily slip for this podcast is due. Alright, so we're about to jump into the Marginalia Notes, Unit 2.3 on American Revolution. Remember that by the end of today's lesson, students will be able to recall what the American Revolution was and describe its causes. So let's start off with the first slide. The British Empire. All over the world, the British were constantly setting up colonies, meaning territory it conquered and used for its benefits. If we take a look at this image here, we know that the British lived here on these islands. But even though they lived here on these islands, they were going out and conquering all of this different territory in red. They're conquering all of this territory, and all of this territory was considered their colonies, meaning land that they have conquered, land that they are bullying, land that they have now made their own in order to benefit. Why are colonies beneficial? Why would Britain want to go and conquer more territory? First reason is when you conquer more territory, you get more land. 
you also are able to get more workers or laborers. You're also able to gain more natural resources, and natural resources are things naturally made by the earth. For example, if you conquer more areas, if you gain more colonies, you gain natural resources like wood, coal, metals, gold, diamonds, and anything else that's naturally made by the earth. When you have accumulated more land, when you've accumulated more workers, when you've accumulated more natural resources as a result of gaining colonies, as a result of taking territory, all of these things provide you with more power. And so why would Great Britain, this tiny little island section, why would they go out to conquer all of these red areas and make these red areas their colonies? Because all of these territories provided more land, more workers, more natural resources, and therefore more power. As a result of accumulating so many colonies, Britain had an empire. And an empire is basically a large group of conquered land under the power of one nation or leader. So if we go back to this particular map, we know that Great Britain is located here, and all of the portions in red are its conquered territory or colonies, and therefore this entire red section is being controlled by this British lion who is basically taking all the benefits of controlling all of these different territories. Even though they've conquered a lot of land, the British have their eyes set on conquering a new colony. They have a new territory in the world that they want to control. And that's going to be this territory here, circled in green. We're going to talk about this territory. Most of you might know this as the United States of America, but back then it was not called that. It was actually called something else. So what was this new territory called? It was actually called the New World. Please make sure that you're going ahead and you're entering the name New World for your notes as this is a blank on your sheet. So the New World. In the 1600s, the British had their eyes set on what we call today North America or the United States. But that's what we call it today. Back then, this was called the New World. The New World was seen as highly valuable due to the fact that it was pretty much untouched, aside from natives and a few explorers. So because not many people had visited the New World, and because not many people lived there, Britain realized that a lot of the natural resources would still be available. They realized it would pretty much be very easy to come in and take this land since not a lot of people already lived there. And so they were very motivated to gain the New World as one of their colonies. The first groups of British settlers who arrived at the New World were pursuing or were looking for economic wealth through fertile soil for growing crops to sell back home in Britain. Basically, the people that first left to go conquer the New World were just trying to find more ways to make money. And one of the ways that they were hoping to make money was to be able to plant tobacco plants in the New World. They would plant these tobacco plants, and their goal would be to take them back to Britain to sell them for cash. The second group of British settlers, who were known as the Pilgrims, the Pilgrims, the second group, who decided to go and visit the New World and settle the New World, they were pursuing or looking for religious freedoms. They were leaving Britain since during this time period, Britain was suffering from religious intolerance or hatred. Now, if you've ever seen the Disney movie Pocahontas, you're pretty much talking or looking at the time period that we're seeing here on this slide. In the cartoon Pocahontas, we're seeing various British settlers moving into the New World, trying to conquer the New World on behalf of their motherland, Britain. Now, the movie Pocahontas, although it's a cartoon, is actually based on some true accounts. There was an actual Native American by the name of Pocahontas who lived in the New World and who experienced firsthand the arrival of these British settlers coming to conquer the New World on behalf of the British government. Now, Britain, after sending wave after wave of British settlers to the New World, they were actually finally able 
to gain the new world and conquer the new world. Please make sure that you fill in the blank here for your title. So Britain gains the new world. Regardless of why the settlers chose to head to the new world, whether it was religious freedom or whether it was economic desires to make money, regardless of why they chose to head to the new world, the British government, which remember, the British government is a constitutional monarchy at this time because the Glorious Revolution already took place. So the constitutional monarchy government expected to use the colonies for Britain's benefit. Upon conquering the territory with its settlers, the British government names the land the 13 British colonies. So if we take a look at this map here, on this map here we can see the New World. We can see here that on the eastern coast of the New World, the British settlers arrived and pretty much came to dominate this entire piece here on the eastern coast. Now, even though these settlers are here trying to gain religious freedom or trying to make money, they are still expected to follow the rules of the British government back at home, which is a constitutional monarchy. And the constitutional monarchy has decided that this area of the New World, which has just been conquered, is going to be called the 13 British colonies. This will not be called America until the end of our notes when we talk about the American Revolution. So please keep in mind that this is currently the 13 British colonies. Now this is a random but pretty cool fact, but the very, very first person to ever be born in this New World area was actually someone by the name of Virginia Dare. She is the first child to be born in this New World area, and she was born in 1587 in a town known as Ronak. If we look at the map here, we can see that Ronak today is located here on the eastern coast of the U.S in the state today that we call North Carolina. Now, the interesting thing about the colony of Ronak is something horrible happened to them shortly after they arrived in the New World. They had gone over to the New World to go ahead and help the constitutional monarchy conquer the New World, and then very shortly after, they disappeared. I'd like you to go ahead and pause this podcast in order to find the link for video one, in the description section of this podcast. As you watch the video about the missing colony of Ronak, jot down two things that you learned or two things that you found interesting from the video. Once you're done watching the video and completing this section of your video notes, you can go ahead and jump back into the podcast. To jump back into the podcast, please just go ahead and find podcast part two link and click on that.